Hello everyone. Good evening. Let's still wait for some more live audience tonight. Good evening to all of you, my dear live audience. All right, so while we are still waiting, I would like to greet all of you. Good evening, and once again, welcome back to our channel. I miss you all. The last live I had was Sunday, so it's already, it's almost five days ago. So I really miss you a lot. I celebrated my birthday last Tuesday, and here I am again, ready to have another worthwhile lesson with you. So tonight, all right, my dear learners, I would like to invite you all to share the link of our live video so that many will learn from our discussion tonight. Yes, share the link on your Facebook account, share the link on your uh, social media accounts, send the link through your messengers or any messaging application so that many will learn from our topic because we are going to discuss a very Yes, a very useful lesson that every language learner should know and should learn. And tonight is a very exciting, and I know for sure it's a, it will going to be very substantial since we are going to have with us tonight Teacher Sam. Yeah, we are going to have a guest tonight. He is a British English teacher, and he is about to share with us a lot of of his experiences. But while we are still waiting for some more audiences tonight, let me just acknowledge our live audiences, yeah? Let's begin with Cristela Cassandra Fabia. Hello, Cristela. Virtual hugs to you. <laughs> also, we have Jessely. Yes, from Cristela. Good evening, Teacher Aubrey and Teacher Sam. I'm so excited to learn tonight. I've been waiting this. Yeah, I've been waiting this live lesson since yesterday. Yes, thank you. Of course, one of our avid learners here with us is Margeri Garilau. Hello, good evening. Yes, there is Yenyro Badaguas. Magandang gabi po. Yan, magandang gabi rin po. Of course, we have with us tonight, um, Romer Salamat. They're also greeting you. Don't worry, Teacher Sam is already there at the backstage of our StreamYard software. He'll be here with us in just a few while. Also, we have we have with us tonight, English Shara or Teacher Janet. Um, yes, yeah, so excited for Teacher Sam and Teacher Aubrey's collab. Watching from Turkey, yes, uh, hello there. How are you there on Turkey? Next, we also have Cristela. She's having her countdown. If this is in person, yeah, and sabi niya, teacher, if it is in person, maybe you are sitting side by side. You Maybe you are seatmates. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello, magandang gabi rin, Carlos. Yes, um, Ray Palom, oh hello, Ate May. And there is also Nardo Mingay watching from, yeah, from Mandaluyong. All right, so once again, good evening to all of you, my dear learners, and welcome to our more than 30 live audience. So I know for sure many will, yeah, many will come later on <laughs> during our uh, discussion with teachers out. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, my dear learners. Oh, wait. I'm just going to greet Jane and James Devera. Hello. Good evening. Elmer Rojo. Also, we have, um, yeah, Elmer Javier. Hello. Watching from Saudi Arabia. Here is Eric Canada. Hello. Good evening. Don't forget, don't be shy to uh, put your name there on the live chat box as well as your place. So I can shout you out. Also, we have, we have with us tonight, yes. Hello, host Chini. Chini Tamayo, Ate Chini. Good evening, Mom. Oh, hey, hey, hello po. 
Ayan, si Nicole. Hello, Nicole. We also have with us Rudy Ruby Palma watching from Mati City. Is that Cebu? Is that a part of Cebu? Mati City? JW Yadao, Gary Bedia. And to all of you, oh wait, I shouldn't forget her. Euphemia Descolar. Descolar. Hello. Also, here is Maria Nilao. Yes, hello, Maria Nilao. And to all of you who are watching tonight, yes, um, I hope that you'll be with us until the very end of this, yeah, of our live lesson because it will be very exciting, I assure you. Since aside from having the discussion proper, we are going to have exciting games at the last part of our live lesson tonight. And that sounds really exciting because we're going to play that with our British English teacher later on, Teacher Sam. So there is someone watching from Cambodia. Hello, how are you there? Hello, belated happy birthday. Thank you, thank you so much. You know what, I was also very happy because aside from the fact that it was my birthday last Tuesday, I got engaged. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend proposed to me during my birthday last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone's also watching from Batangas. Ala eh, magandang gabi po sa inyo dyan. Kamusta po kayo? <laughs> watching also from Jeddah. Hello. Sarah Jane Montaoz. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you, Etinot Nasenia. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, I'm becoming very talkative now. So before we begin, my dear learners, I'd like to motivate you just like the usual thing I am doing. And let me welcome again all of you again. Welcome to all of you here on our channel. This is Teacher RB, your English teacher. And we're going to discuss tonight something about experiencing a language or particularly that one on the screen how to experience a language yeah how to experience a language or as i told you on our promotional video of teacher sam it is very perfect for those who are experiencing the feeling of a boredom or if you feel like you're not making any progress in learning a language so what are the things that you should do to improve or to keep moving, to keep improving in learning the language? Well, we have to answer that question on the screen, how to experience a language to help you disregard all those feelings mentioned, feeling bored, feeling stuck, feeling you're not making any progress. That will be exciting later on together with Teacher Sam. And to motivate you, of course, just like the usual thing I'm doing, I search for a quotation to motivate and uplift your spirit. It's from an anonymous person said, small progress is still a progress. You know what, my dear learners, it's a problem with the language learners or with people in general, that when we are making a progress, sometimes when it's a little progress, when it's a small progress, when it's a small achievement, it seems like we're not celebrating it. But what you really have to do is to acknowledge, to honor, to celebrate even the smallest achievement, even the smallest progress that you can make on your journey. Because still, it is a progress. All right? Take note of that. It is still a progress that you have to celebrate. So I hope with that short adage from an anonymous person, I am motivated you. I cheer you up. And with that, my dear learners, and uh, let's not make it this talk any longer. I can't wait. I'm going to uh, introduce to you our live uh, teacher tonight. Aside from me, yes, our guest teacher for tonight. I'm going to introduce him to you. So he is a British teacher. Yes, he is a British English teacher. Whoa, that sounds like Harry Potter. <laughs> Who loves traveling to explore places, culture, and language. And he also has experienced teaching English for 
seven years and you're going to know him a lot more later on. He has experience teaching for seven years in Spain, Portugal, and Italy to all levels, yes, and ages. And also he is a content creator for four years, yes, for four years already on Instagram, also here on YouTube, on TikTok, and he's also a podcaster. He's sharing a lot of his um, language learning experiences and tips through podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear learners, let us all welcome with our jolly virtual claps, none other than teacher Samuel John Williams. Hello, Hello. teacher. <laughs> Hi, teacher Aubrey. Hello, everybody. How are you all? Hello. How are you, teacher Aubrey? I'm doing great, Teacher Sam. So how are you? Where are you now? I am in Italy at the moment, in the north of Italy, where I teach English and I, I, I do all of my videos making English lessons and stuff like that. So Italy. All right. Okay, so here is Teacher Sam already. By the way, he is a British English teacher. He originally came from England from Stratford upon Navon, right? That, that is right. Is, yeah, <laughs> I oh, mastered that good. already. <laughs> Stratford upon Navon, that's a city where Shakespeare also came, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the name is very difficult, Aubrey. He's done very yeah. well. The name is Stratford upon is a preposition, it means on in old upon. English. Like yes. Shakespeare in English. English. Stratford yes. upon. And Avon is the name of the river. So the full name mm -hmm. is Stratford upon Avon. Upon Avon. All right. Yeah. So, yes, thank you so much. But now you are there in Italy. And we have the six hour time difference. It's already 9 30 here in the Philippines. And I think it's just 3 30 in the afternoon there in Italy. Yeah, it's just gone 3 p.m., 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So, it's not too late. It's not too late. It's still early there, but here in the Philippines, it's so late. <laughs> so, teacher is Hopefully, sound. everybody in the Philippines stay awake. We're going to be talking about some fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. They will. They are going to stay awake. Uh, they're going to be with us until the end of this live lesson. By the way, can you please greet our live audience tonight, teacher Sam? Can I greet them? Well. Everybody, so nice to meet you, uh, Teacher Aubrey's audience. I see that there are a lot of people in the Philippines and also around the world as well, which is amazing. It's amazing to speak to you all. Thank you so much for coming to the live. I must forget, I don't want to forget, sorry. I need to shout out Teacher, I have to remember, Abby Yami. Abby Yami, <laughs> right? Teacher yeah, that's my co-teacher. She was requesting me to shout for you to shout her out. Yeah, she is teacher, yeah, Maria Abigail Pitikero. She was requesting. And also another, please shout him out. He is my co-teacher too. Um, Sir Rodelio Mendoza. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Spanish. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All it's right. so nice to to hear from teachers all around the world. It's one of the, yes. the privileges and beautiful things about doing what, what we're doing, making content, teaching English, actually meeting teachers from all over the place. So uh, thank you for watching and hopefully you get something beneficial from this live as well and you yes. can learn things too. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so I'll don't tell you worry. Uh, don't worry as you said this topic. This live discussion of us tonight will be very beneficial to many since every human is really interested to improve his or her language experiences and communication with others. So, Teacher Sam, I'm just going to request you to greet the live audience tonight since most of the viewers here on my channel are Filipinos. Please greet them using the Filipino language. Kindly tell them, magandang gabi. Oh God, um, Madaganga B. Madaganga B. Is that Magandang good? Gabi. Magandanga B. Yes. <laughs> Magandanga B. Good evening. B. Yes. Good that evening, means, everybody. Good evening. Yes. All right. So, Teacher Sam, 
let's not make this talk any let's not make any long talks here let's go directly on our topic tonight uh, the topic that we're going to discuss tonight is about this how to experience a language and as you told me you're going to share this topic in different chapters yeah there yes. are a few chapters you're going to share with us tonight come on can you please give us a background about this topic Absolutely. So I'm an English teacher. I've been teaching English for several years, like or teacher Aubrey has told you, but I'm also a language learner. I've learned three languages, um, Spanish, mm. Portuguese and Italian. I never learned a language um, in a conventional way. What I mean by that is I never learned the language in the classroom, studying grammar, uh, writing lists of words and trying to memorize them all day those are things i have done but a little mm. bit a lot of how i learned the language was by experiencing the language doing things in my daily life that involve the language things that i love to do um, and that really helped me get better and especially mm. when i got stuck with the language because as i'm sure many of you understand it's very easy to get stuck and not be able to yeah. improve anymore and with what you share teacher sam it only means you didn't learn those languages the conventional way uh just like uh, answering grammar books answering worksheets with grammar lessons but you will learn those different languages through your experience, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's what and that's, we're going to be talking about. Yes, exactly. and for you, that's more effective. Learning something through experience or experiential. Exactly. It's so much All more right. beneficial. Yeah, so the thing come is, on, share more the, with us. When you, when you learn through an experience, you kind of learn how you would learn when you are a child. When you're a child and you learn your mother tongue, for example, yes. many of you would have learned um, the Filipino language when you were young. You didn't learn through grammar books or in the classroom. You learned by experiencing the world in that language. So that's what I try to encourage my students to do outside the classroom, but also inside the classroom as well. Because when we experience something, it has a much longer lasting effect on us than if we see something in a grammar book, for example, or if... I, as a teacher, tell you something you're probably yes, not going to remember. And there is this theory. I just can't remember who stated that theory, who was the proponent. But the more the, uh, the more our senses are being involved into an experience, the mm -hmm. more or the higher possibility that we can understand it more, that we can have a deeper understanding. And since we are immersing ourselves into what we are doing, exactly so we it understand only, it at a deeper yes. level mm -hmm. so in that case in that scenario we can really understand and yes learn the language or any other matters that we are learning if we immerse ourselves on that matter exactly the most effective way i've found that people learn a language is when they move to the country for example and mm -hmm. they are all of the time having every experience in that language that is the most effective way that is experiencing the language yeah. so and it's just like teacher sound the usual adage we can hear is this tell me and i forget if you tell a person about it maybe that person may forget that teach me you will teach that person the thing but he may remember so there's a possibility that he may forget but if you involve that person surely that person will learn Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and often what happens is if you ask the person to teach other people something because they're experiencing it more, uh, they will remember it better. So often yes, being taught, we don't remember. But if we're asked to teach somebody else, we will remember because then we have to learn and then we have to teach it. That's what it is. That is what experience something is. And it's much more effective way of learning. Not that it's no problem if you're going to English lessons and your teacher tells you stuff, that is effective. And that is an experience in itself. 
it's just not the only experience you should be having learning a language. Yes, that's a really great teacher, Sam. And now let us move on to the different chapters with this about this lesson. And the first chapter is about this. Come on. Do you feel stuck learning a language? So this idea of language learning that I use for learning language and I tell my students to use is mainly if you feel stuck learning a language. A lot of us get to an intermediate level, upper intermediate level, and we don't know how to improve. We don't know how to get our English better or language better. It's happened to me. I'm currently in that situation with Italian at the moment and I, I'm, I'm struggling for motivation to carry on. So what I try to do is collect experiences in different things in the language. Also, not the same thing. It has to be many different topics. So I might start reading. Reading is a way of experiencing a language. Reading, yes, reading. Mm -hmm. Reading is a great way of experiencing language, something that you can bring, as many of your, your English teachers are here, you can bring stories into your classroom, which is a great way. But you don't want to just be reading the same books, the same stories, yes. because you're going to be practicing similar language skills and you're going to be getting the same vocabulary. Yeah. So you want to find different types of stories or different types of book, maybe fictional or non-fictional, to build your vocabulary even more. And why I say uh, reading books is a great way of experiencing uh, language because when we read a book ourselves we are kind of transported into that world of the book and we go on an adventure especially with non-fiction and when we're going on an adventure we are learning without realizing it in a fun way and we actually feel the emotions um, of that story of that adventure and when we feel the emotions of something we are better at learning we are we are as human beings we learn better when there is an emotional impact to something okay if yes. we learn something that's dry a text a paragraph mm -hmm. learn the english here we're not going to have that same emotional investment as we do with storybooks so that's why storybooks are so effective at helping you learn mm -hmm. and with that i'm going to promote um your youtube channel what's the name of that youtube channel um the cat sheet uh, the okay. black cat channel kindly check that one uh -huh, yes. because teacher sam on the youtube channel is sharing short videos of him sharing different morals or lessons from the stories but the stories there are mostly in written by british uh, authors right but i watch your videos there they can learn a lot from just short videos new vocabulary new expressions and and as an addition to that teacher sam when they are reading they are traveling to new places they discover different places or other ideas they didn't know yet before Right? Yes, and that, that can is true. also widen their vocabulary and imagination. It's true. It is yes. true. And it is so much fun and so effective. Mm. The channel is called Black Cat. Black Cat yes. C Deb. Black Cat oh, C Deb right. are amazing. It's an amazing book company if you want to start reading in English, storybooks yes. in English. The books Those are, are designed. Reading. Graded readers, for graded yeah. readers. Graded readers, exactly, Teacher Aubrey. They are books that are leveled for you. So if you know mm -hmm. that you're an intermediate, you can find a book designed for an intermediate learner, so the language isn't too difficult. And they also involve exercises to improve your grammar mm -hmm. and vocabulary. Yes. They include the audio book, so you can practice your listening. And they're great for using in the classroom. They're designed for English teachers to use in the classroom. So you can use it that as well. What I do is I make video tips for each story. The stories are usually not only British, but let's say uh, English literature. So you've got American writers, British writers. Yeah. Even American writers were included. Even the American writers. Right. Even we, uh, Black Cat even have uh, original stories as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're very good. If you follow Black Cat, on Instagram, send a message and we can send you a 
a couple of free digital books as well. Wow, just digital send a, books, e-books, something like e-books. that. E-books. We can give you access for free so you can check it out and get a, a sense. Follow Black Cat and say um, free e-books and we will send you the books. I, I will read the message, so don't worry. I will find that for you're, you. You're going to reply to their messages. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> if, if, if you message Black Cat, you will, you will, I will see your All message right, so and I will reply. that on Instagram. So that's for our chapter one. Um, do you feel stuck learning a language? What are the other tips that you can add in this chapter one of experiencing a language? Aside from the, reading books. The main thing is to chase different experiences, which we're going to talk at. What is a different experience in chapter two? The main idea is find different ways of learning um i like to use the anal- analogy analogy of analogy, plant, analogy of plants comparing le- language learning to growing plants let's say it like this so mm-hmm. when you grow plants my parents worked with plants many years maybe that's why i talk about plants All right. when you grow plants there are limiting factors there are three limiting factors sunlight water and nutrients in the soil. All right, sunlight, nutrients, and water. In the, Yeah, nutrients okay. and water. If one of these factors is not enough, the plant won't grow. Mm-hmm. Okay? If all of them are not there, forget it. The plant dies. If one of them, it dies a little, it won't grow. If two of them are there and one isn't, it's not going to be effective. So if you imagine a language like a plant, if you're not practicing speaking and you're practicing listening and reading, you've got a limiting factor here. Your language skills are not going to improve as much. You need to be practicing reading, listening, writing and reading. So even with languages, it's more complicated because there are four factors. So if you feel stuck for learning a language, it might be because you're not doing enough reading. Yes, you're not trying new things. You might not be doing enough speaking. You need to make sure that you are working on all of the main skills. Reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Just like a plant needs water, sunlight, and nutrients. If one of them's not there, you're not going to improve, okay? Exactly. And with that, it's just that as a language learner, you have to touch all the different macro skills for you to improve your language learning your reading yes. speaking writing listening mm-hmm. yes so it's perfect for them to also follow you on your podcast on your uh, what's your podcast what's the name of your podcast wait i'm just going to show happy it on English the screen yeah happy English. English. maybe our learners may ask uh, ask me teacher aubrey what does pappy mean why is it pappy english what does the API it's mean, a teacher? Good question. It's a very good question, teacher Aubrey. Um, Papi, I know that in the Philippines, or for maybe some of you living in Spanish speaking country, Papi can mean a guy who's attractive, quite yeah, cute. Attractive. <laughs> I didn't choose the name because I think I am anything special. No, I'm not <laughs> saying it's because of that. Okay. My friend. My friend, when I created Papi English, he insisted that I had Papi in the name because we had a nickname. We used to call each other Papi because we were living mm-hmm. in Spain. I see. In Spain, it's quite common to call people, hey, Papi, que tal? Hey, Papi, how are you? Um, so we used to call each other Papi and he said, no, Sam, come on. You need to put Papi in your name. And I was like, no. <laughs> Max, I see. His, na- his name is Max. I was like, no, Max, Max no, Max, no. Hello, Max. Uh, and... In the end, I I gave in. Well, I mean, I gave in. I stopped resisting. I said, okay, okay. You, yeah, you can surrendered. Have I surrendered, <laughs> exactly, to give in, to yeah. surrender. And I said, Max, look, we can call my Instagram channel, it was at first, Papi mm-hmm. English, but Papi stands for Practice and Perfection in English. All right. P-I- Practice and Perfection in English. P-A-P-I. Right. It stands for practice and perfection in English, but nobody knows that teacher Aubrey. So everybody just thinks Papi English, ah, Papi, 
you know, yeah. Can... <laughs> <laughs> but that actually suits you, your personality, teacher Sam. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if you say so. <laughs> All right. So that's for the first chapter of experiencing a language, which is don't feel stuck learning a language, experience new things, chase different experiences, and feed your different macro skills to improve your language learning journey now let's move on to the second one teacher sam and that is what is a language experience okay With i ev- know you already defined it a while ago yeah a language experience like i am making a lot of content at the moment on youtube especially where i am traveling and making videos in different places because yes. i want to share different experiences with the world and you can watch those videos as well and be like wow this i would have never have learned if i didn't watch puppy english's video yeah exactly that's what i felt that's what i felt when i watched your video i told myself wow it's like i'm traveling in italy in vicenza and in places you you've already been through but you're learning english your main goal is to learn english but how you learn it is with some weird experience that maybe you wouldn't have. It's not like in every video I'm going to be like, today we're going to talk about the present simple and past simple. Are you ready? <laughs> the conventional oh. way. The, the conventional, conventional way. way. You, yes. I'm guessing a lot of you are at good level. You know English. You've got good vocabulary. You understand the grammar, most of it. Maybe not the very complicated things. We all make mistakes yes. still. Yes. Everybody. I even make mistakes. Yes. So you're not even perfect. Even me. <laughs> even, even teach, even teach Aubrey. Can yes, you exactly. And you might be th- you. What you need to do is go on adventures with the language, on experiences. Mm-hmm. Find what you like and go on to YouTube and watch all sorts of different videos. Obviously, watch mm-hmm. Teacher Aubrey's videos. Watch my videos, but yes. watch <laughs> things about if you like cars. Watch things about cars. If you like football watch things about football but in English of course and you're going to learn English with all sorts of different vocabulary and different accents you're going to be listening to people from different places I'm I'm sure for a lot of you this is the first time or one of very few times you've sat and listened to a British British English yes it's the first time here on my channel and it's my first time to to talk with a British English speaker it's yeah. quite challenging for me as i'll be honest with you teacher sam yeah. it's quite challenging for filipinos to listen to a british english speaker mm. because of your accent because of the mm. way how you speak how you pronounce words most especially words with letter r mm. it's just like when you we are saying the word theater you're going to pronounce it how, theater how, Theater. Theater. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like some alphabet sounds are missing. And just like that's just the way how you pronounce those words. So it's quite challenging yes. for us. So to be more familiar, um t- to make myself more familiar with how you speak, um, since we're going to have this live collaboration, I was listening to your podcast, to podcast, to audio materials with British English speakers. So that's an example of a language experience through listening. Exactly. Right? Perfect, teacher Aubrey. You done. You done an amazing job. That, that said, that I would like if everybody could write in the comments a t- a t- uh, uh, an English learning experience. We've talked about reading books. We've talked about watching videos on YouTube. What else can you think of? What else could you do to experience the language? Mm-hmm. Because try and find as many things as possible to give you talking, yourself as many talking options. with an English speaker partner. Talking with an English speaking partner. Talking yeah. with a British English speaking partner, yeah, talking with an American, American English, Australian, mm-hmm. Indian, talking with to another speakers, with native speakers, and and with non-native speakers, because also with non-native speakers, yes, there are more <laughs> there are more non-native speakers of English in the world than native speakers mm-hmm. of English in the world. So the chances mm-hmm. of who you're going to speak in English with are higher with non-native speakers. So you need to know how to be able to communicate with people who don't speak English as a first language. As a communicator, it's important. Not maybe because you want to learn more from them. Maybe you want to speak to natives because you want to learn how they speak, etc. But if you want to get better as a communicator in English and making yourself clear and understood well, it might be a good idea also to speak to non-natives. Talk to other people from the Philippines. I saw somebody from Turkey here. 
talk to other people mm. from Turkey. It's more likely you're going to talk to somebody from Turkey in English than somebody from not Turkey. <laughs> try try it. Right. It's an experience. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Such a nice tips teacher sam now let's move on to our chapter three of experiencing a language and this is it come on why is having a language experience the most effective way to learn we touched on this already before it's yes. going to have a deeper effect on you because when mm -hmm. you experience something you have emotional connection to it and that helps you emotional learn connection. and remember something more when i'm when i'm learning italian I'm living in Italy. I'm very lucky. I can do absolutely anything and it's a language learning experience for me. I can go to the cinema and ask for my ticket and get some popcorn mm -hmm. and watch the film and I've had four or five experiences with the language, talk to a friend. So I'm that sure is... I'm sure you're missing that experience already since it's pandemic. Uh, well, now now we are allowed to here in Italy. Oh, we're, allowed there. We're, oh. we're allowed to, yeah. Uh, as long as you have a pass, you need a. It's called a green pass, which means you've been vaccinated. Oh, and if you right, are, if you are vaccinated, you can travel. You can go to bars. Um, yes. Cinema, oh. or whatever. Oh. Travel, yeah. So that's good. Um, why is and it's the most effective way to learn because it's the most fun way to learn. The most fun way to learn is the most effective way to learn because you learn without realizing it. So that's why you're I learning to... unconsciously. unconsciously. You're learning unconsciously because you are applying the language. Exactly. And exactly. you're making language learning more authentic when it is being used. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I personally don't experience the language enough. I live in Italy, but I spend all my working time speaking in English making videos in English, talking to people mm. in English, writing in English. So even if you could get a job where you had to yes. use English, then mm. that's going to take you on another... And just, Teacher Sam, level. just to tell and inform our live audiences tonight, you're not really a graduate of education course or you, you really didn't take up um, English major when you were studying. Because you were a geographer. Yes, I, I was. I was. Yes. I was. Can you a please geographer. tell us more about that and how you became an English teacher from just merely having so much passion and interest in learning the English language? Yeah. Come on. Well, first of all, I'm passionate about geography. I'm passionate about the world, about traveling. So I think that's something that you can see with how I teach English now. I like to include like a lot of different countries and even traveling and teaching mm. about different countries and cultures in my, in my content and in my lessons. So I studied geography at university, but whilst I was at university, I, I developed a passion for languages because yes. I met people from lots of different countries at my university for the first time. Living as a boy in England, I had a very sheltered upbringing so i didn't mm -hmm. meet people from different countries growing up very much when i went to university that completely changed it was a very multicultural yes, environment see. so this triggered something turned on a light in my head you can say well, uh, i found it really in something like that <laughs> i found it okay. really interesting languages mm -hmm. and trying to learn languages and i found that i was quite good at it by experiencing the language by talking to people and maybe cooking with them or something like that in the language mm -hmm. I learned very well but I studied French at high school in the classroom and I didn't learn that well so that made me think that that's the way I have to learn language for me personally Wait. anyway teacher Sam we have a mm. question here in our live chat box so yes. she wants to check or to validate your uh, geography skills wait I'm just going to check this out it's Ooh. a question. Let's test your geography skills. Teacher Sam, where is Zimbabwe located? Zimbabwe? <laughs> no, you don't have to check your phone. No, I have I have this really good app. <laughs> it's, it's called Google Maps. And it exactly. really it really Google helped Maps. me. I was gonna say Africa, but Africa. Yeah. I wanted to give a more detailed. It's between Botswana, right. Mozambique, Zam Zambia. In South Africa, uh -huh. <laughs> I would love to go one day actually. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, 
when I studied geography, it's a little bit more complicated than we didn't just study where places are in a map. It's more <laughs> to do with how the world works and how the systems in the world work, uh, et cetera. But yes, um, you <laughs> so can test my, my, my knowledge, um, but I will check my, my special application. <laughs> for geography. So thank you for answering that. So teacher Janet, he she, he answered your question. Um, Zimbabwe is part of Africa continent. All right. So that's nice, teacher Sam. You already answered the question for chapter three. Why is having language experience the most effective way to learn? Yes. So now that's let's uh, move on. Let's move on to the chapter four of this topic. Which is that one? Come on, teacher Sam. So if you want to take on this philosophy, this kind of idea of how to learn a language, the first question you need to ask yourself is, how many language experiences do I have a day in English? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once you find out how many you have a day, find out how many you have a week. So you have some kind of goal, some kind of target. And also you need to write down the type of language experience. Yes. So you might say, for today, I'm going to have three language experiences that teach all of, that touch on all of those macro skills that we talked about before. Maybe you don't yes. need to touch all of them. Okay, I'm going to read two pages of my book in English, maybe a black cat book like we mentioned before, because I, I think they're the best place to start reading. I'm going to watch one of Teacher Aubrey's videos to mm -hmm. practice my listening comprehension skills. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have a five minute conversation with my friend um, in English mm -hmm. uh, on the phone. And maybe instead of reading a couple of pages of the book, you decide to write uh, an email with a friend. Maybe you have a friend who you both want to practice your English writing. You can write each other emails or text yes. messages. Something very simple. You don't want to try and do too much, but try and touch on all of the skills on a daily basis make it small objectives that are easier to reach consistency consistently because consistency is the key yeah and for any english teachers as well try and include that in your lessons three targets maybe it's not even an english lesson maybe you're teaching i don't know geography but why not try and include english in it for five minutes of the lesson doing a bit of english speaking about the topic you're learning a bit of english listening by watching a video on YouTube that's related to the topic yes. and read a couple of chapters or write a summary in English about what you learn, just to continue your students touching on their English skills as well, because it is very important. And then try and write down a schedule with a day with three objectives right. and then try and hit it five times a week. Have a couple of days off where, I don't know, you do whatever. You might have a English language experiences anyway at the weekend because it's fun. But try and do it <laughs> on, a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis as much as possible and you will, you will see the improvement. And remember, when you practice reading, it actually helps you speaking as well. I read out loud. Yes, read out loud. Book. Yeah, I read out loud nice. in Italian for an hour, not an hour, five minutes. I read out loud <laughs> for five minutes in Italian. And then yeah. when I go to speak to my friend in Italian, my Italian is better. I don't know why. I don't know how that works. But it mm -hmm. triggers something in the brain, something happens. So take note effective. of those tips. My dear learners, very... take note of those tips from Teacher Sam. And the tips that you shared with us tonight regarding this chapter for uh, how many language experiences do you have a day or a week? They are, I think, um, tips that are very practical. Mm -hmm. well, they are very practical. I think a language learners already know them, but we just we are here, teachers, uh, influencers, content creators, to remind them that they are the things, or these are the things that they have to do. Yes. Right. Something like that. And you're all doing great because you're watching this video, so you're all having a massive language experience here. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah. So well done to you all. <laughs> All right, so, so much for that. Let's now move on to chapter five, Teacher Sam, and it is this one. Yeah, like I said before, this is carrying on from that create language experience goals. So maybe at the end of the month, you want to have had 
10 language experience experiences but maybe you want to make some bigger goals for example um, I want to do an online course about cooking in English or mm -hmm. I want to bake a cake using an English recipe or using a video I watched explaining how to cook this cake on YouTube some bigger goals like this um, I want to read one book um, this month in English mm -hmm. don't make too many goals if you are making a monthly goal make two or three big goals okay and then have your English language experiences to reach those goals as well I do think it's very important to have goals and and write them down because yes. that's going to keep you motivated do you use language do you have language learning goals Aubrey of course goals? yeah um, even though I'm an English teacher, I'm a Filipino who is an English teacher, still I want to have this goal that I can talk to native speakers as if I'm a native. Mm. There's no dead air or something like that. And I think I am gradually achieving those goals. And now I'm talking to a British English speaker like you. It's so extremely... It's yeah, extremely I want to congratulate difficult. myself. It's you should. extremely difficult. It's somehow um, challenging. Yeah, it's challenging for me to have this experience to talk with a native speaker like you. But it's really fulfilling. Mm -hmm. As I'm learning the English language, even though I'm a teacher, I'm still searching for a lot of ways to keep myself uh, on the track, to make myself keep improving. Yeah, I keep on reading blogs, watching videos, listening to podcasts. And yes, one of the goals is to really immerse myself into the language to talk with the natives. I really love having this conversation with natives because I can really practice my speaking skills. Yes. Aside from that, I can also improve my confidence level. And that's, mm -hmm. a, that's really a problem to most language learners having the confidence having their the enough guts to talk with um native speakers or just with the local speakers here in the mm -hmm. philippines but with enough confidence that's one yeah. of the many uh, factors that is hindering yeah the language learners teachers and, and the confidence you you build from doing that from learning a language from being able to speak to different people is going to have an effect on different parts of your life as well um, as well with your work and extra stuff so everything that you do has an effect a knock-on effect on everything else I think and that's why learning a language is so good and that's why I'm a little bit upset that people in my own country don't learn languages because I think there are so many benefits Mm -hmm. um, not only that, that it helps you grow as a person, but it helps you understand other people as well who mm -hmm. are from a different culture to you. So you're all doing great. I wish English people learn English more, uh, not English more, but any language more, mm -hmm. any language, just to learn a language would be great. Um, I think it's, it's very important and it is extremely difficult, um, to be able to speak like a native and to be able to use a language um, confidently when talking about things that you are not mm. an expert on, when talking about things you don't talk about every day. I'm very good at talking in Italian when I'm mm -hmm. talking about things I talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. As soon as a topic of conversation comes up and I'm with two Italians or three Italians, and it's something that I'm not used to talking about. I go very quiet and I lose my confidence. So that's why you have to experience different types of conversations and different things. So you are able to communicate in the language and a vast array of topics because you're going to have different experiences anyway. Make sure oh, yeah. you don't always talk about the same thing. Bad idea. Makes you feel, you think, oh, I'm really good, but you're not uh, improving as much as you could all right so just keep on practicing and we received a comment from christella cassandra fabia learning english language is a lifetime journey yes it's a lifetime journey so we just have to keep on practicing not to target Absolutely. perfection but to make 
language a part of our routine to make a language a part of our life right exactly exactly <clears throat> yes so uh, that's for our uh, chapter five create language experience goals and it's very important because once you have goals you have purpose you have purpose in learning a language you have purpose in your life if you have goals and that those goals challenge you to keep on striving to keep on improving and to keep taking extra effort to achieve things teacher sam mm -hmm. yeah and also make sure you write down why you want to achieve those goals mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. for example teacher aubrey said i want to speak english like a native and be able to speak to people from all different countries mm -hmm. why do you want to do that well because it's going to benefit my career because it's going to make me more confident. exactly it's because, exactly and when you've got reasons to do something it gives you a lot more motivation especially when you write those reasons down okay yeah take note of those tips from teacher sam so that's for our <clears throat> excuse me teacher sam for our chapter five now let's move on to the last chapter of how to experience a language which is this one teacher sam come on why you should travel to learn a language because i believe the best way to experience a language from my own experience is living and traveling um and learning the language that way mm -hmm. if you have the opportunity to go to an english-speaking country to study or to work or maybe just mm -hmm. to go for a short holiday <clears throat> do it because you're going to have a million experiences just even in a short holiday that will stay for you, with you for forever which will help you understand the language, will help you understand the culture behind the language, which is also very important. Yes. And sure. it will help motivate you to continue learning because uh, when you can see the language being useful, which you will if you go to an English-speaking country, you'll suddenly be, wow, this is really something practical that's going to inspire you to learn more. Um, so as I said before, I'm making these videos where I travel around and i teach english in different places that the kind of goal behind those videos is to encourage people to travel and learn mm -hmm. learn languages of course but travel and learn in general because as i said before when we learn about different places different cultures different languages it makes us more rounded people and makes us understand each other better which i think is is really important i really want to go to the philippines i know people are watching from the philippines oh thank so you hopefully i can go to the philippines i hope too. that you can visit here <laughs> in the philippines yeah i know it's very difficult at the moment with coronavirus but i am sure that um at some time in our lives we all have the opportunity i hope we should all have the opportunity to travel and traveling is a great way to learn languages yes you can immerse yourself into learning the language into different culture and understanding different cultures different people from around the world so i hope i can do the same as you do teacher sam but before that let me just share this one with our live audience tonight i'm going to share this screen it's my first time to do this share uh, share screen no 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 wait i'm going to share with you this one Oh, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, share screen. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to promote your <laughs> channel and your Instagram. I'm just going to share with our live audience one of your videos, traveling and, uh, yes, traveling to different places and yeah teaching english wait i'm just going to download it so that later on they can watch the video before we end this one because it's cool. your um one of the main purposes why we're having this live is for you to uh, encourage people to discover different culture so that they can learn language authentically mm -hmm. right exactly. sure, Sam? yes and uh, with that, we're already done discussing the different ways uh, through different chapters on how we can experience a language. So let's have a short rundown once again on how they can experience a language. The first is, uh, do you feel stuck learning a language? And teacher Sam shared with us different tips not to feel 
you're not making any progress try different things um try be flexible in learning the language all right for the second one chapter two is why is a language what is a language experience teacher sam um also define that clearly to us that language experience is something that you do unconsciously you're uh, having different experiences uh, on a daily basis but on different ways such as uh, talking with a native speaker reading a book um, listening to podcasts and other things related to them and also um, we have why is having language experience the most effective way to learn so that was being answered clearly by teacher sam also we have how many language experiences do you have a week or in a day and in the chapter five teacher sam discussed to us discussed with us uh create language experience goals because having a purpose is very important yeah that's our driving yeah that's the goal that drives us to keep on improving to keep on striving and of course for the chapter six why should you travel to learn a language again those are the different chapters you have to remember to experience a language so now let me open this one teacher sam i'm going to share it with ah yeah so for now let's have a short yeah i think it's a commercial a short break <laughs> i'm going to share with you this one video this is one of your latest videos teacher sam in which you taught english as you traveled in milan in milan yeah yes, in milan. <laughs> yeah, so i'm going to share it with to them my dear learners come on i hope you see this one English. My name is Sam. Also, oh, this is the video. Can you see the video on screen? Yes, I can. Yes. I yeah, 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 yeah. So that's it. Let me just share this one with you. Hey guys, welcome back to Puppy English. My name is Sam and I'm traveling the world and teaching you English. Today I'm in Milan in Italy. We're going to explore the city and of course learn some great English lessons as well. So let's go. This is Milan, a city that exhibits elegance, that demonstrates the modern, and that reveals fascinating history. To exhibit, to demonstrate, and to reveal. Three alternative ways of saying to show. So welcome to Milan, and let's learn English. And the centerpiece of Milan is the Milan Cathedral. In Italy, they call it Il Duomo. And this cathedral actually has 3,500 statues on the outside. That's an incredible amount. And you know what they say about statues? The more, the merrier. The more, the merrier. That's a nice expression. It means the more, the happier we will be. The more, the better. We usually use it with people. For example, when you're inviting them to a party. The more, the merrier. So this is Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II. That is a mouthful. If something is a mouthful, it's really difficult to say. But basically, this is a shopping mall, or in British English, a shopping centre. And it's full of luxury shops. It's full of designer labels. That's what we call fancy clothing brands such as Prada, Louis Vuitton and Dior. Oh yeah, and it's also one of the first, if not the first, shopping malls to exist. You could say it's a bit of a trendsetter. A trendsetter is somebody or something that brings something into fashion. I am a bit of a trendsetter. I was starting to get some funny looks, so I went down into the underground and caught the metro. I came out of the metro and I was hoping to see a very famous painting, but I was out of luck. Behind me is the convent de Santa Maria di Grazia, and inside this convent is the painting of the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, and I can't go inside. I'm going to admit it, I had to book in advance and I didn't, so maybe next time. Of course, the painting of the Last Supper is very famous, but what is the difference between supper and dinner? That's what we want to know. Our supper is a specific type of dinner. It's usually at somebody's house and it's really informal. So you might invite your friend around for supper and watching the football. But you wouldn't say, do you want to go to a fancy restaurant for supper? You'd say, do you want to go to a fancy restaurant for dinner? With all that talk of food, it was time to eat Milan's famous dish, cotteletta. So we're just going to the restaurant and I've bumped into a friend. This is? 
from Turkey. And we're going to eat some kotaleta. Yes. So guys, this is the kotaleta and it's veal, which is like a baby cow, and it's pounded. So you pound it, you punch it, and that flattens the meat, and then it's covered in breadcrumbs and fried in butter. So let's try it. Well, it's really nice. Tender but crunchy. So it's tender, it's quite soft, but the outside is crunchy. So crunch, crunch. Selim then took me to see Swarza Castle, which was absolutely enormous. This castle really has a fascinating history. So Leonardo da Vinci designed the castle's defensive structures and later Napoleon drained the moat. Okay, a moat is like a canal that runs around the castle and to drain means to take all of the water out of it. He also got rid of the drawbridge. So a drawbridge is a bridge that lifts up. I then went to speak to Salim to find what it's like living in Milan. So guys, as you know, I'm with Salim today and she's from Turkey. So I thought we'd ask Salim, what is it like living in Milan as a girl from Turkey? Do you like it? Yeah, for sure I like it. Actually, I like this overall experience. Even though I'm living in Italy, you can expose a lot to like, different cultures. Mm -hmm. So I can find the like, environment that I can speak English a lot. So I can find many people English speakers. So I mean, I have been here for two years and I can see my improvements uh, in terms of the English for sure. Mm -hmm. And apart from the English for sure, I really like this Italian culture here, especially these buildings and the architecture. It's really like growing up experience. It's really mm -hmm. like grown me up. Yeah, so far. made you more mature and definitely like it's a place where it's very international, but you still got that Italian vibe, like you can still yeah, do sure, the sure, Italian sure, things sure, as yeah. well. After our little chat, we checked out the huge park that surrounds the castle, a great place to relax. There you go, guys. We've seen Milan. We've learned some amazing English and we'll see you in the next class. Bye. Bye bye. That is Milan, an amazing city for people to come from all over the world to live, study or work. I'm travelling the world and I'm teaching you English. Where do you think I should go next? Now it's my Turkish, if anybody knows Turkish. Oh, okay. <laughs> at, the, at the end of the video yes. there's a part of me talking Turkish. Doesn't matter. Oh, that's really nice, Teacher Sam. And Teacher Sam has a lot of different videos such as that one, like that one, he is traveling to different places and yes, he's teaching English and that's a manifestation, a clear manifestation of chasing language through experience. Right? Exactly, exactly. You can see <laughs> and that and you can see with the girl, Celine, talking. Who's that girl? Yeah. She's a follower, a follower of mine on Instagram. So I oh. messaged on Instagram, is anybody in Milan? I'm filming. And she replied like, oh, yeah. I said, nice. do you want to be in the video? Yeah. So, if you're um, going to visit here in the Philippines, mm -hmm. message me on Instagram and then I'm Absolutely. going to be with you on your video. Cool. <laughs> All right. Cool. So teacher Sam, we're done with the different chapters of about this one, how to experience a language. And now let's move on to language learning tips. Teacher Sam, um, I received yes. questions. I received these questions yesterday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so these are the questions that they would like to ask you. The first one is this, how to remember new words. Okay. Well, this is a question I get a lot, how to remember new words. And mm -hmm. there is not one way to learn new words. There is the way that works for you. And if that works, that works. That's perfect. I'm going to tell you how I remember new words. You can try it if you like it, if it works, mm -hmm. use it. If not, and you have a better way, that's fine as well. So I learn new words spontaneously in life. I'm reading a book, I come across a word I don't know. I'm talking to a friend, they say a word I don't know, and I ask them, what does that mean? And they tell me. Um, maybe I'm watching a film or a series in Italian, for example, mm -hmm. and I learn a new word. I'm using Italian because that's the language I'm learning to give you the idea. Yes. But you would do it in English. What I do is I have my phone, yes. I take the new word, I open notepad. All right, you open notepad. <laughs> oh, it's doing that thing right now. Come on, teacher yeah. Sam. Can you wow. see? This, yeah, is yeah. My la <laughs> this is my last list. Oh. I write down the words in Italian. Yes. 
I write down okay. the translation in English.、Mm -hmm. I look at them. I go, okay. Once I feel a bit confident, I'm familiar with them. I give my phone、mm -hmm. to a friend who tests、yes. me.、Wow. Uh, so you know, I've got to try. It's, it's like、hard. reviewing. It's like review yeah, for a test. It's like, <laughs> it's like a test. Someone's、yeah. checking you out. <laughs> yeah. So I give it to a friend or my girlfriend,、yes. and and they tell me the、mm. name in English, and I've got to tell them the name in Italian. As you can see here, I only got. Oh,、right. died, my phone died. No, it hasn't. <laughs> I only got five out of eleven, so I said here must try harder. That's okay, yeah, but that's okay. good.、Yes. Five out of eleven is okay for the first test. Then what I do is I take the words that I didn't remember,、mm -hmm. and I go on Quizlet. Do you know Quizlet? Quizlet. Yeah, that's a useful application. They、yeah. to our live audience tonight.、Uh, let's encourage them to install that Quizlet. That's a very useful、uh, application. You can download that from your、uh, Apple.、Uh, From your Apple devices or through your、um, your computer, Google you Play Store, yeah, also yeah. on computer. You can do it on your phone,、yes. your computer, your tablet, Google Play Store, iTunes, whatever. Yeah, you download that. It's a that. useful application to help them、uh, memorize or to remember、yeah. words easily, right, Jerry、yeah. Sam? Very <clears throat> good. Yeah, basically, it does a similar thing. You make word lists, and you have cards, and you have the sound. You can do it with、mm -hmm. the sound, or you can read it, and you have、mm -hmm. the word in your language, and then、yes. you say it in English, and then you tap it to check if it's correct. The good thing with Quizlet is that there are also games to practice the vocabulary as well. There are all sorts of different games, so do try it. So with the words that I didn't remember, I put it onto Quizlet because、okay. these words need <clears throat> a bit more of more attention, and I play the games on Quizlet. I also, I forgot to say, when I Do this with my my friend、yes. testing me. When I get a word correct, I also have to make an example sentence with the word. Yes. So, for example,、um, badile, badile. I would say what, what shovel. That shovel. It's a very difficult word. The first the word first words there on the first the. The words there on the first column are Italian words. Yeah.、Right? Okay. But they're very difficult words. I was I was、mm -hmm. reading a difficult book. Madile、mm -hmm. is a shovel, which is a type of spade. It's like a spade. So、mm -hmm. I might say、um, I dug a hole with a shovel. I have to、mm -hmm. say in Italian. Okay, which is very difficult. Yeah. But when you make a sentence, it helps you remember because then you're seeing the word being used in context. That's very effective, and that's what I do to learn new words. So if you want to do the same, do it. I find it very effective. It's very easy. Why not? They, they may try that, or they can find <laughs> other ways that really suit them, right? Teacher exactly.、Sam? There's no and, one way. Yes, at Teacher Sam, um, in the first part of our live video, I told our live audience, and you also oriented us regarding this,、uh, the black cat. Ah,、uh, it's black a cat. Of, yeah. It's a reading company or an editorial company there in England or、yeah. in Italy. <clears throat> company is、yes. based. So, the company is based in Italy. Yeah. In Italy. So I'm just going to share with them another example. I would like to encourage you, my dear live audience, to watch Teacher Sam's video there, and you'll really learn a lot. I'm just going to share this one video with them. Is it too hot there, Teacher Sam? It is hot. I'm getting hot now. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting undressed. That's it. Okay. okay. I'm going to share this one. The place where we live. With yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I chose this one because、um, it's we're familiar with this story here in the Philippines. We studied the this story in our literature literature、okay. class. So I'm going to remove you first, teachers. So first, um, watching stories or story books, audio books with stories, or yeah, um, as simple as reading different books can really help you to remember new words, to immerse yourself into the culture, um, into the idea of the author, as well as, of course, you learn the moral or the lessons from that story. So let's watch this. Here's the. This is more than just a place where we live.
Our houses, our neighborhoods, our cities, and our homes are not only built with bricks, they are built of stories too. We must take care of our homes because they are at risk of being destroyed by us, the people who created them. We need to make our cities, our homes safe, a place where everyone feels they belong. We need cities that give opportunities to everyone, and we need cities that are sustainable. Don't stand on your home, but protect your home. We're all giants in this world because we can all make a difference. Gulliver's Travels supports Goal 11 of Agenda 2030, Sustainable Cities and Communities. That's it. That's it, Teacher Sam. And I'm going to share another one. Wait for a while. I'm yeah. going to share this. It's very useful. I'm sure I'm going to share another video file with our learners tonight. It's another video of Teacher Sam. And I hope you learn quite. <laughs> I move you. Imagine being able to travel the world. So many places to go and so many things to do. Excuse me, my name is Pierre. And if you go to France, you can visit the Eiffel Tower. It is uh, exquisite. Perona Pero, if you go to Mexico, you can go to Cancun and you will visit the best playa, I mean beach, in the world. Es muy bueno. Vamos! Healthy there, if you come to the United States of America, I'll take you on a rodeo. Yeehaw! That's what I'm talking about. Buongiorno, if you come to Italy, you will get the best food in the world. You will get the pizza, the pasta. Andiamo! Okay, so where do you think I should go? Wow, that's from blackcatcdub.com. So they have to check that one, Teacher Sam. And yes, as Teacher Sam said in the first part of our live video tonight, you can message the black cat on the Instagram and they can give you free um, e-books. Yeah, is that yes, correct? Yes, e-readers, e-books, yes. Yeah and you can read them, you can learn a lot from those different stories. And now, teacher Sam, you already answered the first learning English tips. Learning English tip, which is how to remember new words. Now let's proceed to this uh, second question. Since our live audience know that I'm going to have a British English teacher guest tonight, they asked me to ask you on how to learn British English. Hmm. Wow, British English. <laughs> It's not the easiest thing to learn, but you can improve and you can learn things about British English. The first, the first thing you, you can do to learn British English is start watching British English series and films. Mm -hmm. um, have you watched Harry Potter? Yeah. Teacher Aubrey? Like, you know what? We have you watched it in English or have you watched it? Yeah. I watched okay. it when I was young. When I was mm -hmm. young, I think oh, when I was five, six or seven, and I can really relate to what Harry Potter is saying and actually talking to you right now, teacher Sam, mm. it's, it feels like I'm listening to Harry Potter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, yeah, maybe, I don't know, do you watch films in the original language in the Philippines or do you watch films dubbed? Oh, we have here um, movies here in the Philippines. We have Netflix, we have TV shows in which they are broadcast movies yes in original language and also mm -hmm. other movies are being dubbed so that filipinos will enjoy watching them because they okay. are, they can understand them more yeah well first thing you need to do is you need to watch the classic mm. films of british watch english classic films? so for example harry potter james bond monty python if any of you like comedy a bit older but it's a classic monty python um, there are so many um, films you can watch with British English. First, you need mm -hmm. to realize what is British and what is American, but you can simply search on Google. Also series. There are many British series that you can watch, famous series worldwide. For example, Peaky Blinders or anything like that is British. I don't know if you know of Peaky Blinders. Um, there are so many things you can watch. The next thing is watch YouTubers, Instagrammers like me who are teaching British English mm -hmm. and speaking in it 
in a British English accent or listen to the podcast. You'll find people on YouTube who teach British English is different to American English in yeah, so much in two ways, mainly the pronunciation yeah. and the vocabulary. We have different words to American. We have different slang words in formal English that we and use yes, a lot. Teacher Sam, on my previous live, it, it, yeah, it was my last live, second to the last live before this one. Mm -hmm. um, the topic I discuss on my live um, are the words in English, in American English, and the counterpart vocabulary terms in British. Yes. So they can check though that video if you haven't watched that yet you can check that so that you'll be more familiarized with just like the word jail in american english it is spelled as j-a-i-l mm. a place where prisoners are being held for a long mm -hmm. time and then the counterpart of that jail word for the british english is also pronounced as jail but the spelling is really different which is g-a-o-l g-a-o-l G yeah. G A O L. But that's also pronounced as jail. Jail. Maybe that's an old English. Maybe. Because yeah, because American English English speakers they prefer more simplified spelling of the words compared yeah. to the British. Yeah, you get a lot of um, what's a common example? Uh, theater. Yeah, we yeah. would pronounce R E at the end because British English is a lot of words in English came from French, yes, like theatre sure. came from French, and the French spelling is R E. So the British English is still more similar to the French. We still use theatre, mm -hmm. T H E A T R E. But in America, they changed it to theatre. Yes. ER at the end instead of RE. And just to uh, add up, yeah. Teacher Sam, um, here in the Philippines, we're actually using the American English. Yeah, we're more mm -hmm. into uh, the spelling of the American English than that of the British. Yeah, yeah. in Europe, it's different. In Europe, at schools, um, they tend to teach British English. But then um, as you grow up as a teenager and you are exposed to films and series and TV and YouTube. You, mm -hmm. you learn a lot of American English as well. So in Europe, they have a good balance, I think, between British English and American. It's not strange for a European, a young person to hear British English because everything at school is like that. Um, yeah. but and uh, teachers, I'm here in the Philippines. I think the reason why we are using, the standard English we're using here is the American English, maybe mm -hmm. because we were colonized by the Americans. That's why, mm -hmm that's yeah, uh, the, their influence unlike those of the indians they are more into british english because they were colonized by the british people something yes like that. Yeah. yeah yeah it's all history <laughs> <laughs> it has something to do with history so yeah. those are your tips to learn british english First and speak to, to speak to british people we're quite yeah. nice once you get to know <laughs> us we're okay you can find some friends i'm sure Yes. And now let's move on to this part in which our live audience, yes, you, our dear live audience tonight, can ask any questions, yes, to Teacher Sam. Ask questions for me, yes. Come on, put your questions on our live chat box and then uh, we're going to choose questions. You can raise any questions that you would like to clarify from me or from Teacher Sam and then we're going to answer them in real time. Come on. Come on, I'm going to search for questions. Share your questions. We're going to wait for some questions. Let's just read some of the comments here. You may ask questions. Teacher Sam is here to ask, what are your questions? So, Teacher Sam, my first question is, how are you? After a right. long discussion. I, I'm all right. I'm all right. You know, in British English, we don't say, how are you that much. We say, you're all right. You Just, are, are right. you all right? Are you all right? And are you, like, right? Yeah. Are yeah. you all right? And then I will reply, yeah, I'm all right. So, yeah. How are you? I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. And also in Britain, we have a very strange attitude. Like in Australia, if you ask somebody how they are, they'll be like, I'm amazing, man. I'm fantastic. In Britain, we're very... I'm okay. <laughs> even oh, if we're even it if seems we're like very less talk, 
lesser words we are, in British. It's something about our character, we're less enthusiastic. We're more reserved. So often we say, yeah, I'm all right, which means I'm fine. We never say, oh, I'm great. In America, oh. they are more like, I'm great. I'm so good. In Britain, we're like, oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. So... <laughs> Nice, Teacher Sam. So for those who are still watching our live video tonight, um, don't forget to leave a comment on the live chat box. Put your name, your place, so we can greet you. Teacher Sam can greet you. So we haven't yet received, we are not yet receiving questions. Maybe things are clear to them. But now, maybe later on, we can receive questions, Teacher Sam. Oh. Absolutely. Oh, hi. All right. I will receive a question. Let's answer this question from Yao Mao. He asked, come on, teacher Sam, read his question. Why is it that in British English, you have a lot of accents too, like received pronunciation? I have a friend from Brentf Brent Brentford, I think you mean, Brentford, who speaks different too. Good question. In England, we have a lot of regions yes. and different yeah. regions have different accents because the world isn't as connected, wasn't as connected as it is today. So people lived in different parts of the country and they have their own accents and even words. Some words are different. In Britain, yeah. this happened. and We have different accents, which I think is something to celebrate. Uh, it's a mm. great thing. We have to celebrate diver diversity. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we, we must. We must. It's a great thing. Received pronunciation is a very controversial thing in English, British English. So received pronunciation is an accent that many people think that they should learn if they want to learn British English. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really, it's not very common not many people have received pronunciation. A lot of people have something close to received pronunciation, but they have a regional accent somewhere right. as well. It's because of the regional accent. Yes. In England, for example, my accent isn't too far away from received pronunciation, but I have, an, I have a regional twang, like a regional something there as well yeah. in england we don't have too many people who receive pronunciation the place where you find people who've received pronunciation is in international schools abroad because mm. they learn english um, from audio from textbooks from the bbc etc where they have received pronunciation but in, in england we don't really have it it doesn't exist it's a myth me. all right i see um, it's also the same here in the philippines here in the philippines where we are a country which is an archipelago or when we say an archipelago it is consists mm -hmm. of different islands mm -hmm. yeah well yeah. places are being scattered through islands and then we have different regions though the language we are speaking is filipino and then the basis of our language is Tagalog, Tagalog, mm -hmm. right? But since we have different regions, when different when Filipinos speak of Tagalog or Filipino language from different part of the Philippines, they actually pronounce Filipino words differently. Maybe yes, not just maybe. I'm sure about that because one of the factors is that that's being affected by their um, regional accent. Mm. Just like you there in England, or yeah, in a British in Tame. Now in England, sorry, can I just mention? In England, things have changed a lot. In the past, people used to think to be on t television, you need to have received pronunciation. Now, the attitude has changed, and they're having people with all different accents because if somebody has an accent, it doesn't mean that English is bad. Okay, so that's something yes. very important to remember. Right. Um, as well. And Teacher Sam, we receive another comment from Yenurel Badagos. Hi, Teacher Sam. How many languages do you speak or can you speak fluently? At the moment, I can speak English fluently and I can speak Italian fluently. Mm. I, I spoke 
Spanish and Portuguese fluently, but now I don't use them enough to speak fluently because I don't um, have the time to do it. I need to be using the language and speaking the language consistently. And at the moment I don't, but when I lived in Spain and when I lived in Portugal, I used to speak them fluently. But now if you don't use the language, you will forget it or you yes. will lose your fluency. Okay. All right. So keep on practicing, keep on using the language. Yeah. As you, I mean, as you go through life, your priorities change for me. I have other priorities. So I let those languages go, but I'm sure I can improve them again if I want to. Yes. All right. Thank you, Teacher Sam. So that question was from Yanuriel. Now we have another question from Jane and James Rivera. What is easier to learn, American English or British English? Um, for me, it was British English because I lived in Britain. First of course. Of <laughs> yeah. So it depends. Question. It depends. depends where it depends where you're you're living. If you're living mm -hmm. in the Philippines and you, you're exposed to a lot more American English, so it's going to be easier. If you're in Europe or uh, learning British English at school, British English is going to be easier. I've heard that learners have told me British English is easier. Learners have told me American English is easier. It's what you are used to. I think American English can be easier to understand. And I think it can be easier to imitate the accent because British mm. English, it's much more closed. We speak here. We speak here. Americans okay. speak out here. They're very much more. Their uh, alphabets, their vowels are very clear. Ah, yeah, yeah something uh, like that. Uh, exactly. But <laughs> we are. Uh, 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 uh. Mm. We come, we are, well, America's cold, but we come from a cold country. We keep the language here because we don't want to All lose right. heat. I see. So, so that's the um, answer. You finally so, figured that thing out to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now, teacher Sam, we have another question. What do you think of Filipinos? Every Filipino I have met in my life so hmm. far has been so, so lovely. I've met some Filipinos in Europe, um, mm -hmm. traveling, um, also learning Spanish. I knew a guy from the Philippines, really, really nice guy. Um, right. Teacher Aubrey is really nice. I really want Thank to go you. to the Philippines. I think it looks beautiful. I've seen the pictures of all the islands, the beaches. Yeah. Come on, guys, you're so lucky. We have beautiful amazing... beaches here. Beautiful beaches. And the food, yeah. I can imagine, is amazing. Yeah. I would love to go to the <laughs> Philippines. Yeah, you are all so nice. And, and you've all been so kind to me when I, when I have spent time with you. So only good right. things. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Sam. Another question is again from Veggio. As a British man, what were the side comments you received from other people? What do you? What does she mean by side? Or he? What does he mean by side comments? Veggio, what do you mean by that one? Come on, mm. clear that question to us. Um, side comments, maybe not so positive comments. Something like that. That's my perception and understanding mm. on his question. As in, as a British man, what people said about British culture, about British people? As a British person, what were the side comments or the comments? Just generally, just comment. Yeah. Hilarious comments. He mm. said, a hilarious comments. He said, like funny he, comments. Something like that. Or uh, sarcastic comments. As yeah, a British hilarious man. or sarcastic, something like that. From people from other countries? Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, people, as a British man, what was I say? Okay, so people always talk about British weather. So they always say that it's raining all the time in, in Britain. Mm. They are laughing at us about that. And also about the food. They say that our food is not very good. They are laughing at fish, fish and chips. So people always, when they talk about Britain, they say fish and chips, mm. or the weather, the rain, the queen. People always talk about the queen, the royal family is something synonymous with the United Kingdom. And at the moment, people always talk about Brexit, which is really not fun to talk about. But do you know about Brexit? What is Maybe that? It, yeah, Give it's, us not, 
yeah in europe it's a big it basically it's a political thing in europe we have a union where all of the countries are together britain left the union so all right this um, is a comment that you get a lot as a british person from a person from another country they say oh what about brexit uh, it's like a tease yeah conversations right. that people talk to you about all right so that's it now let's re receive another comment it's somehow personal but i think teacher sam can answer this how old are you teacher sam i am 29 years old Wow, so Teacher Sam is very young. He is 29 years old. Very young. <laughs> and he's teaching English for almost very seven young. years. So he started teaching at the age of 22, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. Now let's proceed to the next question from English Shara from Teacher Janet. Come on, read the question. Could you please enlighten us about the difference between English and British, are they the same? Yes and no. Yes and no, yes and is, no. The answer, is the answer Why? to that question. B British, well, okay, English is from England. Yes. Okay, England is a country. Um, mm -hmm. Britain is a collection, well, Britain is the island. So Britain is made up of three countries, Scotland, England, and Wales. Mm -hmm. yes. So English, England is in Britain. That's the difference. So anything just coming from the country England is English. That's and why it's called, coming, teacher Sam, that is why it's called United Kingdom. Yeah, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Yeah, so British means from the island of Britain. English means from the country of English. So some things are English and British. I'm English oh, yeah. and I'm British. I'm from England and I'm from Britain. Yeah, you're from England. That's why you're English. Yeah. And you're from Britain. That's why you are British. It's like you are Filipino, but yeah. you're also Asian. No? You are from the mm -hmm. continent Asia. You're from the Philippines. Yeah. So I'm Ooh. English. I'm British. I'm European. Mm -hmm. It's, All right. it's, it's complicated, I, I, I know. Maybe I, can explain it <laughs> I know she got your answer. So okay. uh, those are the questions. Now, Teacher Sam, let us move on to the fun part of our live tonight. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I have a game. Yeah, it's a surprise game. I hope you'll get surprised. <laughs> so we're going to play. No, not me. It's going to be you. So you cannot never forget me for teaching you these things. Um, we're going, Teacher Sam is going to try some Filipino tongue twisters. <laughs> oh my no. <laughs> yeah. Teacher Aubrey. Are you joking? Yeah, yeah. I cannot do yeah. that. It's serious, teacher. My Sam, Filipino serious. is very bad. <laughs> Let's just listen to a British man speaking and pronouncing different Filipino tongue twisters. Are so you going to laugh at my pronunciation? This. Yeah. I'm going to say it first, to read it first, and then you're going to do your part next. This is the first one. Shopao, shomai, suman. Come on. Are you going to laugh at my pronunciation? No, I won't. Okay. I won't. Come on. I promise I won't. <laughs> Shopao, shomai, Zuman. It's not Zuman, it's Suman. Suman. Uh, Suman. All right. <laughs> Suman. Shopao, Shoma, Shomai. 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 All right. Virtual claps to teacher Sam. Good job. So let's translate that into English so you'll have an idea what are those things that teacher Aubrey asked me to say. So when we say Shopao, that is steam bonds. Mm. All right steamed buns and when we say shawmai the second one that is pork dumpling okay pork dumpling yes and the third one which is suman suman that is a rice cake sounds delicious. is that typical things you eat in the philippines somehow because we reach yeah. in rice mm. and in agriculture it sounds, <laughs> so it sounds very yeah. yummy yeah, sounds very yummy. Now let's proceed to the second one, Teacher Sam. This is it. Say, I'm going to say it first. Nakakapagpabagabag kapag kinakabaga. 
Nakaka baga bag. No, it's not again. Sorry. Nakaka bag baga baga bag. Kapag kinaka baga. That was really good, right? Yeah, that was that's perfect. really good. And when we are going to translate that into English, when we say nakaka baga baga bag, it's the the feeling that you are being bothered. You're bothered. The bothered feeling. When we say kapag, it the translation is if. There's a condition, if. And when we say kinakabag, it's a feeling there in your stomach. It seems like your stomach is filled with so much air. Right. Yeah. And when we say ka, in English, that is you, second person. You're talking to another person. Uh, you are feeling so bothered. It's really bothering if you have so much air in your stomach. So that's Bloated. it. Yeah, you something say, like I'm that. I'm bloated when you've got air. Yeah. So, bloated, something like bloated. that. Bloated. Mm, okay, interesting. <laughs> so that's it. Nakakapagpapagabag kapag kinakabag ka. Another mm. one is this. Bituka, botika, botiki. Bituka, botika, botiki. Come on, teacher mm. Sam. Bituka, botika, botiki. <laughs> Another one. Try one more time. Bituka, botika, botiki. <laughs> oh, I'm really enjoying this. Let's just translate this. It's good, words. right? Yeah, I love it. Ten the out of ten. First one, the first one, um, bituka, that is intestine. Intestine, That's okay. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. intestine. The second one, um, botika, in English, that is pharmacy. Pharmacy, right. The third one, lizard, or butiki, in English, that is lizard. Lizard, right. Yeah, I will so remember. Good. You have to remember, so Botanki. once you visit here in the Philippines, you have some words, Botanki. Filipino words that you already know. Right. <laughs> now let's proceed to this one. It is pitumput pitong puting tupa. Pitumput pitong puting tupa. Come on. Pitumput pitong puting tupa. Wow, that's brilliant. Another yeah. one. Another one. Pitumput, Try one more time. Pitumput. Pitong puting tupa. <laughs> Very good. So when we're going to translate that one into English, it will be 77 white ship. When we say pitong put pito, that is the Tagalog term for, or the Filipino word for 77. 77. Okay? And when we say puti, that's a color in English that is white. Puti, okay, white. And when we say Tupa, that's an animal. In English, tupa is a ship. A ship. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then it, it will be the very last one. Last one. And then we're going to proceed to the last part of our live now. It is like this. Pinaputi ni tepiterio ang pitong puting putong patong patong. Pinaputi ni tepiterio ang pitong puting putong patong patong. Come on. Pinaputi ni tipeterio ang pitong puting putong patong patong. <laughs> oh, good job. So let's try to translate that into English. The translation goes like this. Tipeterio whitened up the seven white rice cakes on top of each other. Of course. That's the translation. Yeah. So for the last game, teacher sound, we're going to play Would You Rather game so that our live audience and I, or our, yeah, our audience, they will get to know you more. So it's just as simple as they're going to give you a choice. They're going to give you two choices. You're just going to choose one. Would you rather choose this one or this one? And you don't need to reason out. Just choose one. All right? Okay. And from those short answers of yours, they can know more about you. So the first question is this. Would you rather, by the way, my dear live audience, share your questions on the Would You Rather game on our live chat box. And I'm going to flash them on screen so Teacher Sam will answer them. I'm okay, ready. The first, the first question goes like this. I'm going to ask you first. Would you rather choose coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. The second question is, would you rather choose to be able to fly or to turn invisible? Fly. Fly. Next question is, would you rather choose... Um, come on, share your questions. Share your questions. Would you rather choose 
to have all right this question would you rather choose losing your teeth or losing all your teeth or losing all your hair uh losing my hair <laughs> lose your, all your hair then yeah. your teeth okay another is would you rather choose losing all your old memories and never be able to lose to make a new and, one or never be able to make new one what's your answer god that's a tough one i would choose oh, losing that's oh that's horrible no <laughs> lose it's challenging uh, no i don't know make new ones make new ones difficult new questions ones. Oh, yeah another is um would you rather choose oh wait this question from video would you rather choose to speak endlessly or non-stop or listen horribly or can hear even hear out even the silent battles hmm. listen horribly i just yeah listen horribly <laughs> next question is this from Mao Miao Mao would you rather choose to stay in Milan or Philippines the Philippines I all, I'm always in Milan Philippines Philippines try out some new things would yeah. you rather choose to be criticized or to be ignored criticized criticized yeah why, I can... why? because being ignored they don't even listen to me if they criticize me, they don't agree with me. That's okay. You don't have to agree because, with me, but, but at least manifest, listen to me. That manifests that they're listening to you. They criticize yeah. you. I mean, mm. I can, it's okay to be criticized. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Next is, <laughs> would you rather choose to have more money or more time? More time. More time. All right. Would you rather choose uh, change the past or the future? I can change the future. Change the future. Change the future. Change the future. Yeah. Next, okay. would you rather choose to love or to be loved? To love. To love. Yeah. <laughs> Another qu question. It's a funny question from Vidju. Would you rather choose to kiss a cactus? It's a funny question. Or slap by your girlfriend? I'd choose to kiss a cactus. Were you slapped by your girlfriend, teacher Sam? But that says slap your girlfriend. I I slap my girlfriend. Oh, you slap your girlfriend. That's a bad thing. Yes, you shouldn't do that to your girlfriend. It's a cactus, no? <laughs> slap, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Next. All right. Um, another question is... Oh, wait. Uh, from Romer Salamat, he said, you're a great teacher, teacher Sam, for being able thank to you. pronounce our tongue twister words. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Romer. <laughs> Another question is, are, would you rather choose a time machine or magic wand? A magic wand that allows me to travel in time. Wow. Wow. That's, a, that's brilliant. That's very <laughs> witty. Uh, would you rather choose career or relationship? Um, relationship. Yeah, relationship. Relationship. <laughs> another. Um, always choose. Okay. <laughs> another is: Would you rather choose winning the lottery or find your soulmate or the one? I already found my soulmate. Oh, that's so cheesy. <laughs> and I found mine too, teacher Sal. <laughs> That's nice. So he would rather choose winning the lottery. Yeah. Because yeah. you already find your soulmate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Would you rather choose to travel solo or with someone? With someone. With someone. Oh, well, yeah. It's more fun. Would you rather... I, I'm not sure with this question. Would you rather choose Marvel or DC? What's DC? DC Comics, they're comic books. Um, okay. So Mar Marvel is like Spider-Man and DC yeah. is like Batman. Mm, Marvel, so I think Marvel there is more. Marvel. Yes. Marvel. All right. Another question is, would you rather discover the cure of a disease or discover life in a new planet? Wow. Depends on the disease. Mm -hmm. Um... I think curing a disease is quite likely that we always find cures for diseases. So I'm going to say discover life in a new planet. 
Okay, so that's quite so not, It's more unlikely. It's more difficult to do. Yes. Would you rather choose sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Okay, sunrise. That means hope. Another that's question is, um, would you rather choose magic carpet or personal robot? Magic carpet. <laughs> it can be yeah. Aladdin. Aladdin. <laughs> That's a great movie, Aladdin. Another is, would you rather choose hero dies in a movie or dog dies in a movie? Hero dies. I, ha <laughs> I, I hate it when dogs die in movies. And I always well, know it's going to happen. You love yeah, dogs. Yeah, I love dogs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, another question is this. Would you rather choose to set free your girlfriend than to have arguments every day? I'd rather have arguments every day. I love arguments. It's, more, it's, it's a hobby for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so would you rather choose hairy or bald? Hairy. Hairy, yeah. Okay, would you rather choose to hear the good news first or the bad news first? The bad news first. Bad news first. All right. So you'll end your story, your uh, listening activity with a smile because of the goodness. Another is this. Would you rather choose to be on a survival reality show or dating game show? Uh, survival reality show. <laughs> I, I like that a lot. I, I, if anybody wants to invite me onto a survival reality show, I will go. <laughs> okay. Sure. Another question is this. Would you rather choose to be loved or be respected? be respected all right because when you are you're being respected there is already the love being present all right I if see. the person loves you but doesn't respect you it's still problem. nonsense there's a problem there i problem. yes okay so do you have more questions to teacher sam to get to know him more i this game is very enjoyable because with just short answers we get to know persons you get to know you more Okay, another question is this. Um, my laptop is a bit late than my phone. I received questions on my phone earlier than here on my laptop. Okay, another question is this. From Yanurel, would you rather choose to know the cause of your death or the day of your death? Hmm. The cause. Then I can avoid it. <laughs> so you can avoid. Wow, nice. Another is... Um, would you rather choose to know the world or how the world began or how the world will end? Um, to know how the world began. Hmm. So that's your answer. To know yes. how the world began. All right. So, well, uh-huh. Or would you rather choose to be a vegetarian or a meat eater? I am a meat eater. I eat meat, but not too much. Uh huh. Between. So so much for that. Those are the funny questions. Funny, somehow personal, and yeah, some are very serious questions. So thank you so much, Teacher Sam. I had so much fun playing with you discussing topics about experiencing language you sharing so much tips to our live audience tonight so now teacher sam before we end this live video what are your final message or what's your final message to our live audience teacher sam come on well my final message is thank you all very much for listening for watching uh to what i ha uh, listening to what i have to say i hope um, I help give you some ideas about language learning and help motivate you if you're finding that you're stuck and you need better ways to learn. I'm a big advocate for learning through traveling and learning through reading. So if you think that's a, a way you want to learn English or learn in general as well, follow me. You can follow me on YouTube, Instagram. Uh, yes. Also follow Black Cat for the reading as well. And... I will help guide you through that and always uh, give you good materials to use. And, yes. um, you can... and teacher Sam is more active on his Instagram. Yeah. 
Yes, so you have to follow him. The links of his social media accounts are all available in the description box below. So my dear audience, my dear community of learners, you may check those links on the description box below. Follow Teacher Sam or Pappy English on Instagram at Pappy English. Also follow him on TikTok at Pappy English. And also don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel. That is Pappy English. Follow him Every. on his podcast, Pappy English or Pappy English Learn English. And then all the same thing goes for his Apple podcast or Spotify. Yeah, no, not Spotify. That's different. <laughs> Sorry. No, Spotify, Spotify as well. All right. Spotify okay. Well. Spotify and uh, Apple podcast, Pappy mm -hmm. English or Learn English. So don't forget that, my dear learners. Do you have some more to say, Teacher Sam? No, just thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope, uh, you know, you're interested in what I'm doing as well. Thank you, Teacher Aubrey, for having me as a guest. It's been so nice. And I can't wait I to do something like this again. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Next time again, let's talk about some different uh, substantial topics some other time. So thank you so much, Teacher Sam. I really had a great time. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation to have this live collaboration. It's really an honor to have you here on my channel to share your learnings experiences with our YouTube online community of learners. So Teacher Sam, uh, stay there at the backstage. Uh, thank you so much and have a good day. Oh, bye. 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 <laughs> so that's it, my dear learners. That's Teacher Sam. Don't forget to follow him on his social media accounts. We have um, his Instagram, Pappy English, his TikTok, his uh, YouTube, his podcast, his Apple podcast, and his Spotify. And of course, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. Yeah, my Instagram, uh, sorry, my Facebook page is Learn English with Teacher Aubrey. Follow me there, but I cannot promise that I can answer all your questions. I'm not accepting one-on-one -on -one tutorials, but just support me to know more of the announcements there and some quick grammar facts. Also, follow me on my Instagram. It is at Oh, gray with five letter H. <laughs> All right. And of course, don't forget, um, if you learned a lot from our discussion tonight, we're almost near to our end. And it's almost two hours live. It's the longest, I think. If you learned a lot, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Yes. Like and follow my YouTube page. Don't forget that. And if you learned a lot, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share comment, subscribe, and click notification bell. And before anything else, my dear learners, we talk about progress. We talk about getting rid of those feelings like feeling bored, learning a language, feeling that you're not making any progress. I want to end this video with this motivational quotation, again, from an anonymous person. He said or she said that you don't have to compare your progress to that of others, right? We need our own time to travel our own distance. Just focus on your own improvement. Don't compare yourself with the improvement of other, with the progress others are making on their English language learning journey. You have your own timeline. Focus on that and don't forget to celebrate even the small achievements, the small progress that you are making because still, that is a progress. All right, so I hope that you are moved and motivated with that one. Don't don't worry, we'll have another exciting live collaboration video that will be on Sunday, 29th of August. That will be very exciting. I hope you're going to be with us on Sunday. That will be 5 p.m. on Sunday. So let's catch up again on Sunday for another exciting lesson because we're going to talk about how to, yes, how to avoid stage fright or how to have more confidence when facing people publicly. That's very exciting. We are going to have an interesting person who is very uh, reliable, yes, I think, to share that one with us. So since last time was my birthday, my dear learners, yeah, thank you for those greetings I received from you. Last Tuesday was my birthday. It was my 26th birthday. And also, I got engaged. My boyfriend proposed to me. 
um, I want you to follow also my second YouTube channel, Aubrey and Family Lifestyle TV, because I'm going to upload my video, my birthday videos are there. So follow me on that second channel together with my family. So again, thank you. Thank you so much, my dear learners. Have a great day. Stay safe, stay sanitized, spread happiness and positivity. Have a good night. Bye.